Okay, welcome back. Uh, I have another G.I. Joe classified unboxing, and this is Tiger Force, Duke, and Ram. Now, I got to admit, as far as the naming convention goes, really, this should be called like a Tiger Ram or something, since uh, it is a Tiger Force vehicle. Uh, we are getting off to a later start today, as far as the live stream goes, because uh, I was really tired, and this is my only day off, so I wound up sleeping most of it. So <laughs> then I got up and I did my grocery shopping and I cooked myself a big meal uh, with fried chicken and mashed potatoes and some of that green giant corn that I like with the, the butter sauce. It's so good. So I'm really full right now. And uh, I'm probably going to take another nap uh, once I finish shooting this because I'm so full. But uh uh, if you're catching this as the replay, uh, and you would like to be part of the chat, uh, you can like and subscribe and hit the little bell down there, and that way YouTube will warn you when I go live, and you can come and participate in the comments, all that kind of fun stuff if you like to. But if you're catching it in the replay, don't feel too bad. It's not really made to be like a live stream. It's just a more convenient way for me to shoot all of this stuff. So, uh. You know, I don't ever mind interacting with people in the chat, but uh, you know, if you if, if if you don't miss it, if you do miss it, don't feel bad. Is what I'm saying. If uh, if you want to participate, that's how you participate. So anyway, let's go ahead and look at Tiger Force Duke and Ram. So it's got a nice piece of artwork on the front, another nice piece of artwork on the side. This one seems more inspired by like. 90s style comics it has kind of like that uh image sort of look to it like uh kind of reminds me of guys like uh not any one specific artist but it does have the feel of artwork that i've seen by people like uh you know jim lee joe maduera uh rob liefeld and of course those are three guys who like all have three completely different styles but i guess he influenced all of them in this artwork so it's it's nice artwork so I know a lot of people rag on Rob Liefeld, but the dude's successful. You got to give him that. So uh, there on the back, we got some more cross-sell artwork. Uh, got a layout of Duke and the Ram cycle and all of the accessories. So uh, other than that, pretty standard G.I. Joe artwork that is a fairly handsome portrait of Duke. He's got kind of like this uh, Mona Lisa smile on his face. And... Uh, I love that pick it on up down at the bottom with him on the cycle. And you can practically hear him yelling, Yo, Joe, as the Sky Strikers fly overhead. I doubt we'll ever see a classified scale Sky Striker, but we can dream, can't we? All right. So let's go ahead and pull this stuff out. So we got a fairly large box there. And then we have cardboard tray. And that's it. That's all there is. Those two things, and uh, there is Duke on the cycle, and uh, Duke's colors. Uh, the green looks really bright looking at it on the screen, but uh, I don't think it, it's quite as bright when I'm looking at it in real life. It looks a little more sort of like a muted olive drab sort of green. It does remind me a lot of the color green that the original Tiger Force Duke had. In fact, these colors all look very close to me to resembling what the original Tiger Force figure looked like, at least as far as, like, you know, my decades-old memory of the figure goes. Now, uh, something worth mentioning is that when I was a kid, for whatever reason, uh, the original Duke figure passed me by. And I don't think I really missed it too much for whatever reason. Maybe, you know, his role was just already occupied by other Joes, like, say, Stalker or uh, Hawk. Uh, the 82 version of Hawk, who wasn't that good of a figure, but I still knew he was the leader of the team. Uh, <laughs> uh, Steeler would have been another guy that would have been kind of like my uh, Duke archetype. So never got the Duke figure, the, the original one, for whatever reason. But I did later on get the Tiger Force Duke. So he's one that, like, I actually have a little more nostalgia for that figure than the original one. While I do recognize that the original one, of course, is the more iconic look for the character. That's not to say the Tiger Force look isn't cool, and I do like it quite a bit. So uh, I do have here with me, 
I have the uh, original classified Duke figure in the more G1 looking colors. So uh, I'm going to take the laser rifle out of his hands. So that way we can compare them a little more easily. Now, with uh, this original Duke figure, even though it's pretty obviously heavily influenced by uh, uh, that original Duke figure from back in the 80s, they did take a few liberties with it. Like you can see, he's got some green on the shoulders. He's got gloves that are uh, mostly dark brown gloves of red trim. He's got those uh, funky gold and gunmetal shin guards like uh, a lot of those first couple waves of uh of classified did and oh hey look at this i didn't expect this uh his, his uh, binoculars are still caught on the belt so that's nice oh and you can see the uh the the desert eagle that i 3d printed for him rather than uh you know keeping the the gun that came with it which you know wasn't that bad of a gun but you know if i can give him a, a big old desert eagle yeah i'm gonna do that instead so uh mostly takes its inspiration from that 82 figure or 83 figure was it 83 yeah i think it was 83 that the mail away came out and uh then uh the it was released in stores in 84 so it does take a lot of influence from this figure but they didn't they didn't necessarily stick slavishly to it they did a lot of their own stuff and kind of updated them a little bit, but it's still recognizable as Duke. If, if I just showed you this action figure and you didn't already know it was supposed to be Duke and said, hey, what character is this supposed to be? And from what toy line, you'd be like, oh, that's Duke from G.I. Joe. Now, on the other hand, they did, from the looks of it, stick a bit more slavishly to uh, the look of Tiger Force Duke, and they did take some liberties like, since he's the same sculpt, he still has those shin guards, but they made the shin guards black. They made the knee pads black. They still have gloves, but they're now gray with uh, black accents instead of uh, being brown with red accents. I think it's black. It might be dark green. I can't really tell in this light. The watch definitely looks like it's, it's more of a... More of a... What is that? Dark green? Is it the same color as a shirt? I can't really tell because the ring lights kind of throwing me off. And the my, my, my ceiling light isn't that reliable either. This light's too blue, and that light is too yellow, which uh, for the most part actually looks pretty good on screen, I think. But if I'm trying to tell what color something is sometimes, I have a little bit of a hard time with it. But uh, he's got the green shirt. He's got the tan pants with the black tiger stripes, very close to the original version with uh, brown web gear and uh, gray boots. So very close to that original Tiger Force Duke as far as that goes. He even has the red collar, like the jacket on the original one had a red collar. This one on the shirt has a red collar. But of course, like I said, that, that original one, it's supposed to be a jacket and have a shirt collar over it. If you look at the sculpt of it, you can see it's two different collars. But with this one, when they originally sculpted it, it's just a, it's just a shirt. So uh, they made the shirt color red, which you know doesn't really make a whole heck of a lot of sense, I guess, if you're looking at it realistically. But if you're just looking at it as being, you know, they're trying to make it look like that old action figure, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Now, one difference that anybody who had that original Duke figure is going to notice immediately is he has blonde hair. And I know what you're thinking, isn't Duke supposed to have blonde hair? Not Tiger Force Duke. Tiger Force Duke had brown hair for some baffling reason. And it always confused me when I was a kid as to why Duke all of a sudden decided to dye his hair brown or whatever. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I do actually approve of them giving Duke blonde hair instead of brown hair. I believe they also did that with the 25th anniversary version of Tiger Force Duke, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, look at them next to each other. They're obviously supposed to be the same character. I'm not really noticing any difference in the paint on the the faces or the hair, but it might be one of those things where, like, if you really go and look at it, you might notice some differences. But but it looks about the same to me. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the cycle. And go ahead and get that out of there. Cut through little paper ties. 
here's some paper ties that are taped on there for some baffling reason. There we go. We got them off. Why are they taping the ties on? That's annoying. And one more here. So I don't know why it is, but uh, never have been able to find uh, any of the cycle sets at any of my Walmarts or at any of the Targets. They've all been exclusive to Target. You had uh, the, the Breaker Ram cycle that preceded this one, and you had the Baroness on her funky Akira-looking motorcycle. That was the first cycle they put out. And uh, that the, the Ram cycle I actually technically was able to find at Target, but only because I went and looked at the Target app and found a store that actually had one in stock. And then I had to drive all the way up there, and they didn't have it on the shelf. So the guy had to actually go in the back where they were just sitting in the back. And, and, and they'd been clearanced out. Nobody bothered to stock them. And they got clearanced out before anybody could even put them on the shelves or would put them on the shelves. So I wound up getting that for a clearance price. This one I just got off the website. I got off the app. So I never bothered with the Baroness. And when it was in the package, you can see one of the handlebars got warped. So I'm going to have to fix that with the hairdryer. Oh, wait, I forgot. These are articulated. Yeah, I forgot these were articulated. Sorry, folks. So it's actually not warped. It just needed to be... Uh, moved so i think they painted these and uh that's why they were kind of sticking a little bit at first so there's a lot of red detailing on this and i'm thinking that's because some of the tiger force vintage vehicles had red detailing on them but it's in some strange places which uh, we'll see in a minute it's not so weird on the handlebars I don't think that actually seems to fit so let's go ahead and open up the accessory box which I think I've mentioned before that I actually like that these accessory boxes are, are kind of made to look like lockers. So that's kind of neat, even if I don't like not being able to see the accessories through the box. At least they found something nice to do with it. So, and of course, uh, over the weekend, they announced that uh, they're going to stop doing the windowless boxes. They're going to go back to having windows on the boxes, which pleases me greatly. Because, you know, every single episode I have, I've done where I've opened one of these, I've been like, they, they really need to bring those back. So they actually did listen to us, finally. So that was nice. So here's the little uh, the little box with the wheel on it, little sidecar thing that's going to hold the uh, minigun. And we get that out. Ugh, this crap. I hate it when they take the I can't bring those window boxes back soon enough. <laughs> uh, we're just going to have to endure this a little bit longer. So here's those tiny little binoculars I was talking about. Whereas the original Duke figure had like the big binoculars that were on a strap. They give them these little tiny binoculars that plug onto the belt. Not quite as impressive. Uh, there's the pistol I was talking about. So we can see that again. So I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like a flashlight or something that makes it all chonky like that at the front but there you have it got the backpack which uh i've never really had a lot of success keeping the backpack on the original uh classified duke so i usually don't bother with it but we'll try to put this one on tiger force duke and see if it does any better maybe they uh adjusted the backpack pegs somewhat i would be happy about that so i guess they do this cardboard stuff to keep the guns from getting bent up in the packages, but that doesn't always work, now does it? So here we have his submachine gun. Looks very much like the submachine gun that came with that original Duke figure back in the 80s. And uh, like the Stalker one, the, uh, the clip is removable. This is the same one that came with Stalker. If I thought about it, I brought Stalker in here so we could compare them because there might be like some different paint apps or something on there. Uh, but to me, it looks pretty much like the same gun. It's definitely the same mold. So, and then we have, uh, so they just put a cardboard tube around, around the barrel of the minigun. Now, one thing 
that I remember from the two different versions of this minigun that I've already had, the one that came with uh, heavy artillery roadblock and the one that came with breaker in the ram cycle is that uh, the barrel of this thing is, is usually warped and it's almost impossible for me to get it unwarped. Like I've, I've tried everything, but it's just such a hard plastic that it, it doesn't even like really, uh, it, it doesn't even really, if you apply heat to it, warp back into shape. And it does look like it is slightly warped. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I can see it in person. But it doesn't seem quite as bad as those other ones. So maybe the cardboard did some good after all. So, uh, so yeah, and the, the barrel turns just like with uh, those other ones. So you can at least try to position it in such a way where uh, it doesn't necessarily get warped. Now, this is made to be uh, removed from the sidecar and your figure can hold it. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in Duke's hands, it's just so we can see him with it real quick. Even though, like, I, I probably wouldn't give this minigun to Duke as something to tote around with him as a weapon, since it's, it's, it's ginormous. And I don't know if a normal man could could carry something like this around with him. Now, Roadblock, it's, it's believable to me that Roadblock could do it, because that guy's superhuman. But Duke is just an ordinary man who's probably about as strong as, like, an ordinary man could be. He's like Batman or the comic book version of Captain America, where I'm sure he's a really strong guy, but he's not superhumanly strong. Not the MCU version. That one is superhumanly strong, which I disagree with. I think they should have done that. But that's neither here nor there. I think Captain America should just be, like, normal peak human abilities. So there he is with his red minigun. It's an odd color choice for a minigun. Like I say, this is the main one I was thinking about where I'm like, why did they make this red? <laughs> like, red accents in some places make sense. Like, red handlebars to me aren't that odd. But a red minigun, that's just a, a bizarre choice. So I don't know why they went with that. So we're going to take that out of his hands almost immediately because uh, I don't need him to have that. So let's go ahead, and before we look at the figure any further, let's go ahead and put the, the cycle together properly. So, of course, uh, the minigun should fit right into this little box, and you can see that there's, like, the, this bespoke peg on the inside that's supposed to hold the handle of the minigun right there, and in my head cannon, that's also what pulls the trigger on the minigun. That's like a little device. I know it doesn't look much like a little device because it's just kind of a peg to hold it on there, but it's a toy. Use your imagination. Uh, one thing I really like about this, and, and hopefully we'll see it with the, uh, the camera, is there is like some diamond plating detail on the inside. It's probably really easy to do that sort of thing in a modern style where like, probably a lot of this was sculpted digitally so they can just layer a texture over it. But that doesn't mean it's not impressive looking. So uh, I do appreciate that. I know a lot of this ground I already covered in the uh, Breaker Ram 2-pack, but it's been a long time, so I've done that, so <laughs> talk about it again. There we go, so that snaps in there, and it looks just like the Ram cycle that I remember from when I was a kid, only with, you know, some more details and some actual handlebars, and of course the uh, Tiger Force color scheme, since it is a Tiger Force vehicle, so... Uh, be nice to see some other uh, colorations of the Ram cycle. Uh, I'm sure they're going to do more slaughters mar marauders. They've already done uh, a barbecue, and they've they've got figures of uh, uh, Spirit already. And uh, God, who else do they have? Like I, get, I think they've got uh, Low Light on the way, and uh, they're probably going to do Footloose at some point. And uh, of course, they have Sergeant Slaughter. Who else was in Sergeant Slaughter's Marauders? I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering. They could maybe do a, a Falcon in Slaughter's Marauders color, even though that wasn't in the vintage line. That was in the uh, the the 25th anniversary Pursuit of Cobra, 50th anniversary, whatever they were calling it at that point. So, and that one looked pretty neat. So, but yeah, there's the cycle. That's what that looks like. Uh, it's got the handle sticking out there, so he can pick up the motorcycle and carry it along with him. Uh, probably not. Maybe Roadblock could do it. <laughs> just like I said, that dude's superhuman. So I'm just going to set that on an arm on my chair, 
Hopefully it won't go rolling away. Oh, one more thing I, I'm going to show off real quick uh, while I'm looking at it is there is a little Tiger Force symbol tampographed on there. There was also one on the gun, which I, I, I neglected to mention, but I did notice there was one on the minigun. So let's go ahead and get Duke all geared up. And first I'm going to put his sidearm into the holster. And of course it stays in there nice and snugly. So that's good. And I'm going to take these uh, binoculars and I'm going to stick them onto his belt. Since, uh, you know, God knows the binoculars stayed on that one pretty well, didn't they? I'm surprised they didn't fall off at some point. And uh, he's got the same, like, like I said, the same web gear, same bandolier, everything, but it's in that dark green, oh, sorry, dark brown uh, coloring. So just like the Tiger Force figure was. Now, I have seen somebody, some people take actually take uh, uh, this bandolier and belt off of this one and put it on the uh, the regular Duke to make him look more like the uh, Sunbow cartoon. But honestly, no offense to the Sunbow cartoon, I don't really care about making the figures look like that. If I did, I'd just buy those uh, Super 7 ones that look exactly like, uh, <laughs> like the Sunbow ones. I was always more of a comic book guy anyway. So... And uh, I just care they look like cool figures and that they're recognizable as the characters. And to me, I look at that, and that's Duke. That, that he, he doesn't need to, you know, be accurate to anything so much as just, like, you know, faithful to the core of the character. And he does have that sort of iconic look to him. And I think they did pick the, fix the backpack. This seems like it's staying on a lot better than that old one did. I mean, you can see I'm holding him by his backpack, and it's just staying stuck on there, like, nice and solid. So I guess they improved that a bit. So that's good. Kudos to Hasbro for that. None of these joints seem overly tight. They all seem like uh, like they're they're on there good. I don't think I ever did an unboxing. I don't think I was doing a G.I. video yet. So uh, I don't feel too bad like like talking about this figure quite a bit since uh, you know I don't think I did a review of them at the time I was doing them yet. But uh, he does come with uh, a different rifle. This one is more accurate to the uh, submachine gun. I think that's an H and K. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm not a gun guy, but I think I read somewhere that that's an H and K. Whereas this one came with some kind of funky, looked almost like a high tech N16, but it might have been based off a Nerf gun because I know a lot of these, uh, a lot of these early classified weapons were based off of Nerf guns. Uh, I do, like I said, I do like this pistol. Fine. It's not a bad pistol. I said it fit in there snugly, and I was not kidding. I'm having a hard time getting it out. But uh, but I, 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 I do like uh, that Desert Eagle that I printed out for mine, and then I think I dropped that into my couch cushions. Ah, got it. Uh -huh. All right. But that's what he looks like with, with all the gear on him and everything. Uh, I do really like this submachine gun, although, like, like, I do associate it more with Stalker than I do with Duke, since that is the one that, uh, that originally came with Stalker. But I'll probably print this guy out, another one of the, uh, the snow job laser rifles, since everybody used that on the cartoon anyway. So but I think Duke looks good with it. Apparently, the figure was originally supposed to come with that laser rifle anyway, and it got changed at the last minute. Maybe has wrote in this place the mold on that original figure or something. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, that's pretty much it for, for, for talking about the figure. Uh, I do think it's kind of funny that this one is more accurate to uh, the, the vintage figure than the original one is. That does kind of amuse me. So uh, maybe they'll do another repaint of Duke and put him in, like, purely classic colors. Honestly, I think that would be a good choice for uh, that... Uh, Walmart exclusive uh, retro card line that would be a perfect addition to that. So hopefully they're already planning on doing something to that effect. So let's go ahead and we need to put Duke on the cycle and see what he looks like on it. And he does have those funky hips that drop down. So hopefully I should be able to fit them on there nicely. I remember I was able to fit breaker on there pretty nicely and his, you know, construction is pretty similar, so I don't think I should have any kind of hard time with that. So we got a peg over here that is uh, slipped. 
<laughs> but the uh, the hole at his heel that should fit on there. Whoops, I accidentally knocked loose the exhaust pipe, but it clipped right back in. It didn't break or anything, it just came loose. And then this one might be a little trickier since I already have the sidecar on there, but I think I still might be able to get it on there without having to remove the sidecar again. Yep, I think that's on there good. Now let's see if we can get the uh, get him to grip the handlebars. And to do that, we're probably going to have to pry his fingers open a little bit. And like I said, these handlebars themselves are reticulated, so uh, it should be fairly easy for you to get his hands to grip them in a believable manner. So... Now, one thing that he lacks, uh, much like the original Duke figure lacked this, is uh, he does not have a helmet. And uh, honestly, I kind of feel like for motorcycle riding, they really should have included a helmet. And I think they probably could have reused a helmet that came with another figure. Maybe even the one that came with Breaker might have worked. But that one might have been a little too high techy with too much communication equipment on there. But they could have reused the one that came with... Uh, heavy artillery roadblock. By the way, I'm hoping uh, they'll finish off all the uh, Tiger Force characters. I believe they're working on Dusty, and I think if they repainted heavy artillery roadblock, that would look fantastic in the Tiger Force colors, so they should definitely do that. But he looks good on the cycle. I mean, it's not a realistic military color scheme on this cycle, obviously, but, you know, it's not really supposed to be. It's supposed to just look cool, and it does look cool. So I definitely like that. Maybe this could be something that uh, we took the sidecar off the of big. It could just be like uh, Duke's standard motorcycle that he rides around the base. You know, maybe even keep that on there. Who knows? Maybe he just likes having a Gatling gun just in case Cobra invades the base. <laughs> but yeah, I got a lot of good paint detailing on there. The Tiger Force uh, paints look good. Uh, they couldn't fit too many stripes onto it, obviously, because it's only a motorcycle it's pretty small but uh the the tampa graft uh logos and everything all those look pretty sweet you got the gi joe logo in silver i like that it looks good so uh i'm really happy with this set i i think actually in a lot of ways this duke figure is superior to the first one that they put out at the very least he's got a better rifle because i like this better than the one that the uh the original one came with and his colors are more accurate to that original action figure, so that's cool. Now, if you want the iconic uh, look of Duke, like he usually looked in the animated series or, you know, usually looked in the comic books where he has that, you know, the, the tan top and the green pants, like this figure is still the way to go. But if you just want a good-looking Duke figure and you don't really care about the color scheme, uh, I think this one works really well, and it still works. Like I said, this was the one that I had when I was a kid rather than the original one. So to me, I'm, I'm, I just kind of already think of that as as, as, uh, as the Duke of my childhood anyway, even though I know a lot of people would not. But uh, he's definitely not as, as uh, definitive a look as uh, the original one, but uh, I'm still really happy to have it. So, And it, it definitely gets a recommend from me. It, uh, it's, it's not as essential as the original one, I think, just because, like I said, that's, you know, the more iconic look, I guess. But, uh, if, if you like the character and if you like the Tiger Force subset, which I do, uh, he's definitely worth picking up and I would highly recommend it. So, uh, that's pretty much it for this episode. I can't think of anything else to say about it other than if, if you get a chance to pick one up, do so. I know some people have been saying they've been seeing them at Target on clearance, but like I said, I've never seen one of these at Target ever. I had to, I had to get it off the app, but you can still get it for retail price on there, at least currently. So that's pretty much it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and all the other fun YouTube stuff down below. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this particular figure vehicle set. I know I liked it. I got more G.I. Joe on the way. Uh, I picked up a python patrol officer uh that was that was on clearance so i got that for like 10 bucks i was pretty happy to find that and uh 
got a, another figure coming, but I, I won't say anything about that right now. But we'll just talk about that when I get to it. Plus, I've still got other stuff to open up here. I got Catwoman. I got Indiana Jones. I got a bunch of superpowers figures that I've been sitting on ever since I bought them. I haven't had a chance to <laughs> get around to doing videos on those. So maybe I'll do those uh, coming up next week. Maybe I'll do the three superpowers figures that I have. But that's it for this episode. We will talk to you next time. Bye.